Hello again from the Canadian North. Ok, for step 5 now. I've separated the C36 and the G1. <coughs> we need two times the E26. We have E and we need the 26. These two pieces here and I said before they will have a different color. Or maybe the same color but but uh, they were not painted with the the big ones. I'll do them by hand. And if I do them by hand, I'd better keep these supports like this and paint the, the small piece and then do the final cut because it's much easier to to manipulate it like this so we have the other sprue another two of them okay and now we have to think about the color of this very small things. Yeah, I've decided to paint them olive drab. This one XF62. Basically the same color as the secondary armament, which is quite a lot. And um, it's going to be the same color for uh, whatever small pieces and small elements come uh, in the supper structure. And the same goes for the next pieces uh, E16, E17, E16, E17, and the C40 this one will be the same I'm gonna separate them now you know what these E's 16, 17 I'm gonna paint them in place and then separate them and uh, I'll do the same for, for C40. Oftentimes these very small pieces are better off to be painted in place here. Even if at the cutting area you'd have to, to do a touch up later. But it's much better to, to paint them in place here on the sprue. Now I don't know if there is any value in showing the painting of, of uh, all these pieces over and over again, the same thing many times. 
I don't know. I guess you could always skip ahead and uh, avoid the the details. I've seen people who show their uh, model being built in like uh, 20 minutes or less. I'm a very slow builder. I do things my way. And uh, well, this is how I function. I enjoy making these movies and I enjoy doing the models. So, uh, yeah. It's uh, it's subjective. It depends on the taste and the energy and patience of each of us to do it one way or the other or to watch these movies or not. I know for a fact I have to increase the tempo of these videos uh, and uh, with the summer coming and uh, other activities uh, outside uh, there will be a bit less time I think for the model but uh, we'll really see how it goes. I always have a stash of uh, of movies already assembled in case my uh, professional or per personal life uh, doesn't allow me for a period to to touch this hobby. I will uh, I will have a stash of episodes that uh, are readily available to be published. I make them in advance, but uh, that that worked very well when I was publishing uh, these episodes every five days. Now, from a while. Uh, I think from April 1st I started to do it twice a week that is uh, Monday and uh, Thursday and uh, we'll see how it goes we'll see how it goes some episodes ago one of the viewers told me, or rather encouraged me, to speak uh, Russian. <laughs> uh, and uh, I think his name is uh, Sergei Kuralev. Uh, he wrote to me in uh, he wrote that comment in Russian, uh, that is in uh, in Kyrillic alphabet, and um, uh, I uh, I used uh, Google Translate to see uh, what he he wanted from me, and uh, <laughs> it was a very interesting exchange in the end. He 
was under the impression I am somebody else who knows, who he knows, and uh, he was wondering why the person would, would speak uh, English. Uh, now, uh, I myself am Romanian. I was born in Romania, and I, uh, I came to Canada at the age of uh, 30. So, uh, both French and English are not my first languages, as you can easily tell. Now, for the Russian language, it's true, I, uh, I studied uh, Russian language for four years in the primary school. A million years ago, yes, and uh, they've been. Uh, they were uh, two hours a week. We had uh, R Russian classes, and um, at that age, I uh, I enjoyed learning Russian. I enjoyed uh, the challenge, being able to, uh, the challenge to to. Uh, to have to write in a, in, a, in a different alphabet, it was a bit like, uh, I don't know, writing in code. <laughs> and um, it, it was nice. I can remember the Russian grammar being very uh, well structured and uh, the rules were quite clear and uh, I, I, I don't know. It was okay, it was nice. So even today I'm able at a very slow speed to read Russian and to uh, pronounce things with uh, in Russian with the Russian accent. And uh, I know if I'd have uh, time to 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 focus on this perhaps uh, I'd be able to, to recover my, my <laughs> Russian knowledge and uh, to uh, perhaps to be able to start speaking Russian at some point. I, I don't know. I don't know. I have this opinion that uh, in English you can read uh, whatever you want these days in English. And uh, but it, it, there are things that you should read perhaps in original, in, in the original language, like, like uh, I would like to learn German, to read the German memoirs in, uh, in original, to, do, to read the memoirs from, uh, from generals and marshals, in the First and Second World War, uh, in original. I'm pretty sure I will never get to to learn German. I should be able to, to relearn uh, Russian and to start reading the big uh, Russian novelist in original, in Russian. But again, who knows what's going to happen in the future. And these days, uh, people tend to put a lot of accent on the, you know, Google Translate. And uh, I can tell you something. No matter how accurate that uh, artificial intelligence is, it will never capture the Russian soul, the famous Russian soul. It will never capture the uh, Russian turn of phrase and the real accent and the emotions and what not in those texts. So uh, I think the real experience would be to to read those things in Russian. 
Now even for this model, in an ideal world, I would have uh, I would have I, I would have have this uh, these episodes bilingual, one version in English and one version in Russian. Of course, I'm I'm far far from from that, so uh, it's just a dream. But uh, you know, it gave me to think what uh, what Sergei what Sergei. Uh, wrote to me a couple of uh, episodes ago. Now for the first block here. This piece is supposed to receive a, uh, a handrail, a photo edge. And that photo edge is this one, is marked A three we can see it in step six but I I want to be able to prepare the photo edge to bend it to the shape in this step before assembling this one so this is uh, Red A. Okay, let's try it this way. Fret A and uh, number three. Yes, this one. So this is the part that needs to be separated and uh, bent on this uh, perimeter. Also, I have to decide what color all these uh, handrails will be. But given that the the ship itself, the superstructure is uh, dark yellow, I think. Uh, I'm gonna do them also dark yellow, the same color as the suffix structure. Remember this this paint color is supposed to be during the siege of Port Arthur. And uh, I don't think during that siege uh, anybody had the time to to paint uh, the handrails very fancy like uh, bright yellow or uh, even white. I think the handrails will be uh, dark yellow. Now the question is should I paint them while in place here or should I cut everything, bend it in shape and then paint? I think I will try the second version and I will paint uh, with airbrush. 
perhaps but while painting this one I could start thinking about the other ones and paint all of them uh, all of them together there, uh, there are some choices to be made here I could paint everything right away I think I'm gonna cut it bend it to shape and paint it, paint it later I think we have to bend right about here before the third uh, strut
and then again similar distance from the other end just before the third strut I should have measured a bit more precisely, but still I will uh, bend it in such a way as to fit these two corners here too. I'll, uh, I'll do that off camera.